Good morning, everyone. Merry Christmas to each of you. It's a tremendous blessing for me to be here with you all this morning, and I was just tremendously honored when uh, Pastor Brandon asked me to come and to share a Christmas message, and so uh, so thank you for that. I'm looking forward to um, what God's going to do today. I, at, the, at the 11 o'clock, my family will be here, and uh, especially my mom, who we flew in from Arkansas a couple days ago. And so the last time that she was here in California, uh, she came in May for my, uh, my graduation, for my, my doctorate back in May. So it's good to see her. Um, uh, yesterday was my dad's, would have been my dad's 86th birthday. So he passed away in 2015, and so his favorite restaurant was Red Lobster. So I took my mom to Red Lobster yesterday, just in honor of my dad, and uh, yeah, and those biscuits. You know, it, was, it was like, yeah, this this is the Lord. This this is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our mouths. <laughs> but um, but you know, Christmas, uh, so many different things happen at, around Christmas time, and all of our, all of our families. You know, we have we have families who are family members who are saved and they come to visit, and we have family members who aren't saved who come to visit. We have we have friends that come into town and hang out with us, and whether they're saved or not, they just come to visit with us. And so, so usually that when that happens, uh, if you're the person that comes to church on a Sunday, they they may come with you. And so I'm aware that in in this service today and in the eleven o'clock service, there could be some people who uh, who don't know Jesus. Um, you just came to service today because in honor of the person who, you, who you're visiting uh, this, this weekend. And so, uh, so I'm saying that because there's some things I want to say today that are addressed specifically to you. Those people who are not saved, but you, you, you might not even be interested in being a child of God, or you might be considering it, but you have some questions that need to be answered. And then there are others of us who were walking with Jesus for a long time. We've been children of God for a long time. And so whether you've been saved for decades or minutes, um, I, I hope that you're something that you're going to think about as you leave here today. And so it's a different perspective uh, that we want to look at today. Um, obviously, as we think about uh, Christmas, we, we're thinking about how God sent his son uh, to, to come and to, to live and to, to die and be raised again and basically initiate this entire gospel story to create a pathway for us to become children of God, to be brought out of darkness into his light. Now, uh, right now, I have two, two daughters that are born, four and a half and uh, one and a half, and one daughter who's on the way mid-April. And so, I'm saying that as a prayer request, and so, um, so, so the thing is, with with my with my two girls uh, that are born, I when they when they want me to hold them, they may lift their hands up. My youngest one says, "Uppy, uppy, uppy." I don't know where she got the extra e on the end. So we've never said it that way, but she's uppy, uppy. So I, I. I I bend down and I pick her up. Or even my four-year-old. Bend down and I pick her up. If they want to be in my arms, if they want me to hold them, at least while I'm standing, they, they can't just get here. Because of my position, because of my status and stature, if they're going to be in my embrace, I have to go down to their level and bring them up where I am. That's what Christmas is about. Now, the thing about it is, if you if you have uh, had children later on in life in your 40s, like I'm, I'll, I'll be 42, and then having having a girl in April. Um, so so when I when I when I bend down <laughs> to to pick her up. Um, Every single time, my body's like, what are you, what are you thinking? <laughs> but I want to bend down and pick them. And then, if I, want to, if I want to play with them on the floor, Daddy, can you play with us? It's like, hold on, let me, let me my mind does. Let me, let me let the rest of my, my body know what's about to happen. <laughs> so we get down to play or puzzles or, or dolls or, or whatever, and as soon as I get down, that's when I start planning. 
what's going to happen in order for me to get back up? That's I gotta I gotta think I gotta think it through. I'm not in the best of shape if you if you can't tell. I just I, that's just that's just my thing. And it and I, I heard a lot about hitting your 40s, but I I thought it was like you know like a myth. And you know when you're, when you're in your 40s, is things start you know snap, crackle, popping. It's like what's what, what was happening there? You know what? What just changed? And so when I, I I bend down to pick them up, and and sometimes my I feel something in my in my hamstring, and, and sometimes I feel, I feel something in in my back. But it doesn't it doesn't really matter what minor pain I might feel because of the outcome of what happens when I come down. Christmas is about God coming down. And for those of you who are potentially considering the Christian faith, considering what makes Christianity different from all these other religions, all the other religions have a different direction in the movement. One of the things that makes Christianity so much different is the direction of the movement. If we could put the first first slide up, uh, what, what distinguishes Christianity from other religions is that, well, the one with the arrow, is that this is what religion says, right? This, this is the format of religion, where, where God is up, humanity is down, and, and religion, it originates with humanity reaching up. That there is an upward movement for approval, that humanity has to do things to be approved by the whoever, whatever God that they're worshiping, to, to appease uh, that God. Uh, it, religion is based on humanity's work for God. And in this, this uh, 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 slide here, you see I'm having God big G, right? Working towards God. But other religions have their gods, little g, and it's, it's the same dynamic here. That is based on humanity's work for all the Hindu gods, for all of the, the uh, even the Islamic gods, or all the other gods, religion, all these religions, is man, humanity, doing something for that deity. Doing something to please that deity. Doing work to earn that deity's favor. Doing work to earn that deity's smile upon their lives. We need to do all these things so that the gods will smile on our crops this year. We need to do all these things so that we will be able to have, have children and be fertile and do all of these things so that our businesses will, will thrive. We, it's based on humanity's work for God and there's a constant striving, constant striving, constant striving and because there's a, a bar that religion sets that will never be met. There's an expectation that will never be met. That's why we call it the hamster wheel of religion. Because you keep going and going and going and going and going, and you're not making any progress. There's a lot of activity, but you're not making any progress, nor do you have any rest. On the other hand, let's go to the next slide. This is what makes Christianity different from any other faith. It originates in the heart of God reaching down. It's the downward movement initiating relationship, not an upward movement trying to gain approval. It's based on God's work for humanity, not our work for God. This is Christianity, in case you were wondering. This is where we get our joy from and our strength from. And at the same time, this is where we get our peace from and our rest from. If you believe this, you can rest. If you believe in the finished work of Jesus, you can rest in the finished work of Jesus. But here's what's interesting. Here's what's interesting. Though this was God's plan, not just at Christmas, but this was his plan before Christmas and is the reason for Christmas. Okay? Like, God didn't just think of this the day that Jesus Christ came and said, you know what I should, I should do today? Um, I think I'm going to become a man. It wasn't just something he thought of that day. This was the entire plan through the Old and New Testament. This plan. Now, this, when we live this out, 
we rest in this and the grace that comes with this. This is where we see us maturing as sons and daughters of God in the life of Christ and enjoying everything that God has brought down to us. On the other hand, let's go to the, the first slide with the arrow going up. You can try to live Christianity this way too. But this was not God's plan at Christmas. This was not his plan. Let's go to the next slide, the arrow down. This was his plan. And so because this was his plan to come down, because he wanted us to be in his arms and he knew that if we, if we try to reach up, we can't reach him. He will have to come down and pick us up so that we'll be where he is. So that we can enjoy his embrace because there's, there's too far of a gap. It's one thing for me I'm 6'1", six, 6'2", six, and one thing for me to bend down and pick up my daughter, it's, it's, it's just a few feet. It's a whole other thing for the creator of the universe to come and be a person. But why would he do something like that? Because that's what love does. Love reaches out. Love comes down. Love initiates. Love seeks reconciliation. Love seeks relationship. And many, many times it's love that makes up the deficit. He had to come down because we couldn't come up. There's no way. We couldn't come up. There's no way. And so, now let's go actually to the very first slide. And so we see in Galatians, Paul writing to the church, and he says this. When the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us as his very own children. And because we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, prompting us to call out, Abba, Father. Now you are no longer a slave, but God's own child. And since you are his child, God has made you his heir. That's the purpose for Christmas. <laughs> That's the purpose for Christmas right there. The whole thing, the timing of it, this whole series, is, we're calling it the, the, the right, right on time. Right on time. When the right time came. All throughout the Old Testament, the, the Jews, the people of God, were hearing prophecies about what God was going to do. And God gave them things to do and feasts to celebrate and rituals to do as a foreshadowing of what was going to come in Jesus. And so the Colossian church, another church in the New Testament, was, was starting to get caught up in those kind of things. And a, a man named Tychicus was like, you know, guys, this isn't really it. I need to go talk to Paul. So, so Tychicus made a 1,500-mile journey to go visit Paul in Rome so that Paul could speak life into the Colossian church and let them know about the proper perspective of Old Testament and New Testament. And so Paul writes them and he says, guys, listen, don't, don't let anyone judge you concerning the things about the law in the Old Testament, about keeping the Sabbaths, about the new moons, about all the festivals. He says, those were shadows. The substance is Christ, and we now have Christ. So all those things we don't need to do anymore because there were arrows pointing to Jesus. Now that we have Jesus, we have what it's all about. But the same thing happened with the Galatian church. A chapter before this, you see Paul expressing some, some frustration. He says, oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? How is it that you got saved putting your faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ and now you think you're going to make spiritual progress working your way towards it? with works of the flesh and, 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 and human effort. He says, no, no, no. The, the miracles that are happening in your presence, the, are those miracles happening because you're working hard for them? No, they happen because of your faith. And it's the power of the Spirit that brings that thing. 
So if you started, if you got into the family of God, if you got into the kingdom of God, just because you believed, then you have to know that it's your faith and belief that carries you all the way. You don't start with belief and then grow by human effort. You start with belief and you continue with belief and you finish with belief. It's all faith in Jesus. So he said that in, in chapter 3 and then in chapter 4 he, he, he did, he's going to another level deeper. He says, when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son. And he summarized the whole thing. God sent forth his son, born of a woman. Born subject to the law. So he had to also obey the law. So he obeyed the law for us. And he did it perfectly. He fulfilled the law for us. So now, because he fulfilled the law for us with a perfect life that he then offered on the cross of Calvary and shed his blood, for those who put their faith in him, they're gifted that perfect righteousness. Because of what he's done. And so then Paul says, that's how he, he bought our freedom. Then Paul says, now those of us who put our faith in him, we're children of God. And we can call God our father. He's not just a transcendent being. He's not just a creator of the universe. He's not some impersonal energy out there somewhere. No, he is our father. And because of what Jesus did, we are brought into a relationship with him as our father. And we're his sons and we're his daughters. Not in just a, a nice poetic way, but in a real way. It is a new reality. We have a new identity, a new purpose, a new security, a new comfort, a new strength, a new power. And where does it come from? It comes from the God who is still coming down. And so I want to entitle this message, When God Comes Down. And it's not when God came down, because I'm not talking about just one event. I'm not talking about just the birth in the manger. He still comes down. The birth in the manger, it began a new dispensation. It started a whole new thing. He still comes down. That's why I want to share with you some scriptures today about that, because I want you to see this whole day. I want you to leave here today with a new rest in your soul because of what God has done for us in Jesus Christ. And I want you to see that our relationship with God as Father is one of receiving, not working. And we, you, know, you might say, well, what, aren't Christians supposed to do some kind of work? Absolutely. So things like the outreach yesterday, I mean, what, isn't that like, doesn't that blow your mind to see that? I mean, I, some of you saw those pictures, you, 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 made, a, you made a noise. You, yeah, or, you know, wow, yeah, because th that's something to wow. But we don't do that so God is pleased with us. We do that because he's pleased with us. We don't do that to earn God's goodness. We do that because he has been good. And we want the people in the world to know that he's been good. So when you have come together, you, you, you put your funds together, you, you went out to buy. I mean, you, you all did that. You got these, these gifts for people that you don't know. Why? Because we believe in the message that everyone needs to hear that God knows you, he loves you, he sees you, he values you. And if we can communicate that even in the least bit by giving you toys for Christmas, then that's what we're going to do. Yeah. It's an overflow of our experience with God. It's not to try to earn God's favor or earn his pleasure. Let's look at I'm going to go through these scriptures relatively quickly, and I don't want you to try to memorize each scripture. The point I want you to see is the, is the constant theme that several different authors through the New Testament are highlighting. Let's begin at Matthew, Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. This one is popular around this time of year, where you have the, the um, angel delivering news to, to, to Mary. It says, uh, see, the virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they'll name him Emmanuel, which is translated, God is with us. So he comes to be with us. John chapter 1, verse 14, the word became flesh. The word is another name for Jesus. Jesus, or the word became flesh and dwelt among us. We observed his glory, the glory as the only, one and only son from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is what we call the incarnation because Jesus, he is a spiritual being, a spiritual entity. And so for him to come into the flesh, to actually be born as a human being, he was incarnated. 
He came from a spiritual atmosphere, a spiritual climate, a spiritual environment as a spiritual being, and he put on flesh. So he was incarnated so that we could actually see him and touch him and feel him and hear him. That's the incarnation. The, the birth of Christ is the incarnation. It's the word becoming flesh. Why? So he can dwell among us. James chapter 1, verse 17. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. John chapter 6, verse 33, Jesus says, For the bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. In verse 50, he says, This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that anyone may eat of it and not die have eternal life. Everything is coming down. It's coming down. God is a God who comes down because that's where we are and we couldn't come up on our own. He comes down and he's the one that now positions us in Jesus Christ. Where we're seated with Christ in heavenly places. He's the one that has given us access to every spiritual blessing. If he did not come down, there would be no hope for us. That's what Christmas is about. It's about the God who comes down. He loves us enough to come down to where we are. And so, we see this contrast where religion has this upward quest, this upward seeking. And because religion can never reach, that work is never done. You can live Christianity as if it's a religion if you want to, but you won't find any joy there. You won't find any strength there. You won't find any rest there. But when you live Christianity as the downward movement of God, now you find the grace that he did what you couldn't do and he did what you didn't deserve, right? He did what I couldn't do and what I couldn't deserve. That's, that's the grace. And then when you see that the work is finished, that everything needed for me to have access to God is, has been done, I can rest. So the things that I do in my life are out of my joy because of who he is. It's not to try to earn anything. And this thing, it, 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 it's, if you hear what I'm saying, you can go, yeah, I, I agree. But you, you might not even see how it is that it plays out in your own life. How many times have you... Um, <coughs> Have you had like a bad sin week? <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm talking about, right? You just, just you're like, I just, I completely, I could have lost my salvation this week. I just, this man, if somebody's keeping score here, this was a bad week. <laughs> it's like you, you were just out of control. And, and then you kind of have to talk yourself into coming to service. You know, you really want to be around a whole bunch of other Christians because everyone got discernment, you know. <laughs> uh, now's not the time you want a prophetic word. You just, you're just like, no, I, I don't really want God's attention right now. <laughs> and so, so as worship is going on, right, everyone's hands are lifted. Everyone's, everyone's just like, oh God, your presence is here. And you're like, yeah, I, I know what it's like to be there. I just don't feel close to Him. I feel like my behavior has created distance. I mean, I was, I was mean this week. I mean, I, 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 I cussed somebody out this week. And it doesn't matter that they deserved it. <laughs> okay, and we just, and we have this thing like, as if, as if your behavior created distance. As if your behavior undid the cross. When you understand that God came down, that our whole faith is based on his work, and you see how you don't mess that up, because you had a bad sin week. No, the bad sin week was already calculated into the equation of Calvary. And so instead of coming and then wanting to sit in the back, like no offense to those who are sitting in the back. <laughs> I'm not saying we're less righteous than everyone else. It's, okay, let me just go on. Um, no, but, but, but you get what I'm saying, right? Instead of feeling like, oh man, I just, I just, I just feel so distant. I feel so, I feel so. No, that, that's religion. 
that lets you know that somewhere along, you feel like you earn it. Now, you might not have said that, but the fact that your performance was low and you feel disqualified, you feel distant, that lets you know you thought you were earning it. Because now you think you lost it because you didn't earn it. When on the other hand, a person who understands the God who comes down, a person who understands that our faith is based on the work God has done for us through Jesus Christ, a person who understands that, when you have your bad sin week, <laughs> you come in and go, thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross. Jesus, thank you that I'm still in. <laughs> thank you that your grace is still powerful. Your grace is still the net that catches me every single time I, I fall. You can thank him for the gospel. You can thank him for his presence with you instead of thinking that it left you. This isn't the Old Testament. You're not David. I mean, David was cool and all, but David lived in a season in dispensation where God's spirit could leave you. He saw it happen to his predecessor, Saul. That's why in, in Psalm 51, when David is, is repenting for him um, sleeping with, with Bathsheba, he says, create me a, a clean heart, O God, and renew within me a right spirit, right? We question we say that sometimes. At the very bottom, you get to verse 11, he says, don't take your spirit away from me. No Christian should ever say that. <laughs> but it was David. David's in the Old Testament. David's cool, but he is not our role model, trust me. I want to be like, no, 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 Jesus is the goal. Yeah. David didn't die for you. Jesus died for you. Yeah. Jesus is the goal. And because of what Jesus has done, we are put in a position with God that David wished he had. The New Testament, it says that the prophets and the kings of the Old Testament, they long for the day that we have. They long to see what we enjoy right now, that God is with us. Without having to be in a temple, but he's with us, and we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. That because God came down, he also came in. Amen. So you walk around with God on the inside of you. I walk around with God on the inside of me. This, this building, it is a nice place for us to come together and worship God together. But this is not the church. Don't get it twisted. You are the church. You and I, we are the church. We are the body of Christ. And the more that that becomes part of our awareness, the more we'll live out this. The God who comes down. So when you see people and say we don't judge them, we don't know because we, we know where we were. And the God who came down for us, the same God who comes down for them. The God who, the same God who reached out to us, the same God who's reaching out to them. One of the passages I want to share with you is this, this uh, Romans chapter 5. It's another place. This is the same, this is the same author who, who wrote the verse we read in Galatians. He's also writing to a church in Rome. And this is what he says. Verse, beginning verse 5, 1 and 2. Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God. Because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. Because of our faith... Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand. And we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. We have peace with God. God came down so we could have peace with him. Has, has anyone ever owed you money? Some of you are like, no, I, I'm the one that owes. <laughs> one of the things my dad said me a long time ago, he said, son, uh, you have a friend who asks you for money, never loan money. If you have it to give, just give it. Never, never loan money. I saw, I saw someone just get slapped over there on that side of the room. I'm just, I'm just going back over here. <laughs> If you have it to give, just give. Why? Because money can change stuff, doesn't it? You can have a good friend, but when they end up in debt to you, it messes up the relationship. They can't look you in the eye. They're not answering your phone calls. They're not answering your text messages. 
They don't, they don't even want to. They don't even want to come around you. Why? Because that's what debt does. Debt creates distance. It, it could be a really good friend. And if you're that person who, who, who owes someone else money, you just feel shame. Because you, either you can't pay it or you just didn't. Like sometimes you, you can't pay it, other times you got some new shoes on. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like you can't, you didn't. <laughs> And so what we're saying here is, is the God, because the God comes down, you don't have to keep acting like you still owe him a debt. So when it comes to being around other Christians or being in a space like this where we're worshiping, sometimes we come in and we can act like, oh, I, can't, I can't look him in the face, like I still I owe him a debt. No, it's been paid already. It's been paid already. There is rest in this message of the God who comes down. It's been paid already. You have peace with God because of your faith in Jesus Christ. That's a Christmas. I mean, Christmas brings a whole lot to the world. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace and goodwill toward man. I'm not saying from man to man. Goodwill toward man. There's an army of angels in the sky singing goodwill, goodwill toward man. Goodwill that's coming down. Over the birth of Jesus. Peace. We have peace with God. Because of Christmas, we have peace with God. Because of the life and death and resurrection, we have peace with God. If you put your faith in Jesus, you have peace with him. Learn how to live in that peace. Let this peace that comes down from heaven overcome and have victory over the guilt that comes from your past. Over the shame that comes from your past. If you still feel unworthy, if you still feel like an old wretch, if you still feel like you just, you don't know how God loves you, you got to let his peace. You got to go back to if you believe the gospel or not. If you believe the gospel, this is it. You have peace with God. Well, don't I owe him my life? No, you don't owe him anything. Our relationship with God is not one we step into out of repaying a debt. Amen. Well, I feel like I should owe him. Then you don't believe the gospel. We give our lives out of joy, not repayment. We give our lives out of celebration, not out of debt. If you still think you have to repay the debt, then do you know how much debt you have? <laughs> do you know how bad your credit is? It's in the negative. Just let me give you a hint. The God who comes down has paid the debt. That's the point. You can rest in the grace of God and what he has done for you. So now because of our faith in Christ, we are placed in a stance of undeserved privilege. We don't deserve it, but he put us there. We don't deserve it, but he reached out, picked us up, and brought us to where we are. And now we can enjoy his embrace. We can come boldly before the throne of God, right? And find help in our time of need. It's a position we didn't earn. He gave it to us. He gave it to us. Let Christmas be a constant reminder to you of the God who comes down. The God who does it. Let it be a reminder to you of our tendencies to make this a religion. And try to work, try to work, try to work. Try to work. There's no joy in that. One of the things I was doing some research some time ago on why Christians don't um, you know, share the gospel as much as we say we should, and based on the value of the message. How can we not share the gospel? What I found was a lot of people don't believe the gospel. If you think that this thing is all about works, then that's why you don't have joy. See, the, the joy is what causes us to share it. When you believe that you're free in Christ, when you believe that you've been forgiven, that's good news. And you share it. But when you still believe that you still have to please God, you're not excited about sharing that. 
There's no joy there. They're striving there. And you can resent being a Christian and still trying to strive and strive and strive and strive and strive. And you're so focused on trying to meet the standard now, you're not worried about anybody else. Think about it. If you're still trying to pay off your debt, you're not loaning cash to anybody. <laughs> right? But when you know that your debt has been paid off, when you know that, that not only has, has the balance been made to zero, but now there's a deposit into your account, you're living out of the abundance of what the God who comes down has, has shared with you freely and abundantly. When you live from that place, then you can be a giver. Not just a money, but I mean time and attention and focus and value. You can stop on the road and lift those other people up like that. When you live from that place, of a place of rest, you can give out of everything that God has given to you. From this place of rest, you are aware of the abundance that has been provided to you, the abundance you have access to, not just for you, but for the world. And so you can constantly be a dispenser of God's grace instead of trying to be an earner of God's grace. This is what Christmas is about. God comes down. Even if it means the King of Kings needing someone to wipe his diaper. I mean, I, I don't know what that conversation was like in heaven when God talked to Jesus about that idea. King of Kings, Lord of Lords, angels worshiping, and all this kind of stuff. And the Father's like, hey, Jesus. I'm about to prophesy to you. I see you in a diaper. In a food trough. For those knuckleheads down there. And Jesus is like, what? But we're both a God. Yeah, I know. This is going to be God becoming man. In order to redeem them and save them, we have to become one of them and fulfill the law for them to bring them out from under it into a place of grace. Someone has to create a whole new standard. Like Jesus, you've seen these humans. Things aren't working out so well. They, they don't seem to get it. I show them over and over and over and over who I am and how much I love them. Now I am the true God, and they still want to worship any, any and everything else. They still want to do things their own way. Son, you have to go. He says, all right, Father. Time and place. And when the fullness of time came, Jesus in the manger, and all the things surrounding that, that Sean brilliantly shared last, last week about Joseph, from Joseph's perspective and the things Joseph had to go through to be a part of that story. Jesus, you got to go through all that. Be born and be sinless and be perfect. And then the night before the cross, Jesus goes, hey, Father, we need a meeting. <laughs> we need a meeting. Just want to check on something real quick. Is this the it? Have we exhausted all other options? Before I die on this cross on Friday, Jesus is having a conversation with his father on Thursday. If, if it's possible, like if there's another way for these nobleheads to be saved, if it's possible, let this cup pass for me. And the father says, no, son, this is the only way. This is the only way. This is the only way. At other times in his ministry, he was questioned about what was going on. And he was telling his disciples, guys, I'm, I'm going to go to the cross. Like, I'm going to die, but don't worry, I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back, but I have to die. Because this is the reason why I was sent. So the purpose of Emmanuel, God with us, let's go to the very last line. The purpose of God with us is us with God. He has to come down, because if he doesn't pick us up, we will not be in his arms. If he doesn't kneel down, we can't get up. 
the purpose of Emmanuel, the name for Jesus, the purpose of God with us is us with God. And so this is the message of the gospel. This is the message of God's grace. And I'll tell you this, the more we believe this here in our hearts, the more rest we will have in what God has done, and the more we will naturally share this news. If you're here and you don't share the gospel very much, if at all ever, the solution is not try to force yourself to do it. The solution is to examine in your heart why not. Something didn't take. There's something that you don't believe. And you heard me mention over and over the, the, the significance of the heart over the mind. The heart is where it's really at. Because sometimes people say, well, I understand the gospel. I get it here, but I don't get it here. No, my Christian friends or my non-Christian friends, if you don't have it here, you don't have it. <coughs> don't even try to give yourself credit for what you hold in your mind concerning these spiritual things. It's what's in your heart that matters. Is what's in your heart that will change your life. We can have a whole lot of stuff here that doesn't change us. Right? I remember being in history class in high school, being all this history, I was not changed, but I had a lot of information. But it's not about reading the Word of God. It's here and it brings life change. So don't give yourself credit to say, well, I have it here, but I don't know. No, you don't have it. This is not even a starting place to getting here. What gets here moves here. What you have here is real, and it changes how you think. Yes. Your heart changes your thoughts. Your thoughts don't change your heart. But that's a whole other message for another time. I'll say that for next Christmas. <laughs> but I encourage you. You can see our world, and our world needs to know Jesus. But those of us who gather regularly with each other, we need to know Jesus. Yes. And we need to believe fully in what the Father has provided for us so that we can rest in what he's provided for us and cease from our striving and move from striving to enjoying and celebrating. Whether you have a, if, see, if you have a bad sin week, that means you also have these other good weeks that you think you have. That you give yourself credit for. You can't give yourself credit for a good week the same way you can't blame yourself for a bad week. We'd be made right in God's sight, even if what you see, it changes. God is the one who has declared us righteous because of Jesus Christ. When you rest in that, it's going to transform you, and you're going to find in that the good news you want to share. So when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born subject to the law, to bring us out from under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons and daughters. We can call out to him, our Father and be heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Jesus is not just a king. He's not just Alpha and Omega. He's not just Lord and Savior. He's brother. He's brother. You may say, is that bringing him down to our level? No, he came down to our level. He brought us up to his. We're in the family. He's brother. And God is Father. Amen? Amen. 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 Merry Christmas to each of you. God bless you.